Good afternoon, class. Our topic today says, or is volumetric analysis. As I said earlier, this is the aspect of practical chemistry that deals with titrating a particular solution, usually an acid, with another solution, a base. The acid is usually tagged A, as you can see, this oxalic acid tagged A, and also the base tagged B, which is potassium KMnO4. The IUPAC name is potassium tetraoxomanganate 7. Potassium tetraoxomanganate 7. Now, in volumetric analysis, lab apparatus are usually used, such as the measuring cylinder. This is 1,000 mil measuring cylinder. We use this for measuring water, volume of water when preparing solutions. When I say preparing solutions, it entails dissolving salts. When I say salts, this is an example of a salt. Substances in this form, we call them salt in chemistry. For example, most of the reagents you are looking at came in form of salt but they can as well be prepared by dissolving a particular sample, a particular mass, in a thousand dm cube of water using the standard measuring cylinder. Now, this is another measuring cylinder for measuring reagents of smaller volume. This is just 100 mil. This is an example of a reagent bottle with um, oxalic acid stored within. This is the conical flask. A measuring cylinder, reagent bottle. Here we have the litmus paper, which is an indicator. We have both red and blue litmus paper when it comes to volumetric analysis. We use the litmus paper, which is an indicator, to know which of the reagents in the laboratory is either a base or an acid. For example, when you step into the lab, and there are maybe a set of reagents without name. How do I know that this is an acid? How do I know that this is a base? For example, one of the best ways to know which is an acid, even to pick up a reagent here, is through the use of litmus paper. This is oxalic acid. How do I know, assuming there is no name here, how do I know that this is an acid? It is through the use of the blue litmus paper because acids generally turns blue litmus paper, red. For example, you can see this is a blue litmus paper. All I need to do is to just moisten it. It is still blue litmus paper. Then you carry out this test, take it very close to the acid. It becomes red, which is an indication that the liquid here is, or the reagent here is an acid. So you can as well do the same for a base. Assuming the other bottle is a base, all you need to do is, so long this one is an acid, by turning the blue litmus paper to red, I'll keep this, try that off a red litmus paper on other reagents. If any of the reagents happen to turn the red litmus paper back to blue, which is an indication that that very reagent is a base. Now this is the conical flux used for titration, titrating an acid and a base. So these are other forms of salt stored in different containers. This is the filter paper used. When we get to quali um, qualitative analysis, I'll tell you how the litmus paper can be, well, how the filter paper can be used. For example, today in volumetric analysis, having known all this, we need to conduct an experiment by titrating oxalic acid and potassium tetraoxomanganate 7. How do I do that? Look at the past question paper of um, the current exam on the board. Let's take this as an example. This is YEC 2016 from Ghana. Assuming this question like this is given to you under volumetric analysis, how do I solve this? All you need to do is, one, this is the bullet. In volumetric analysis, you need to adhere strictly to instruction. For example, 
This is the bullet. Sometimes, normally, we pour the acid into the bullet. Why? We use the conical flux to titrate or pipette the base. But as you can see here, usually A stands for the acid. B is usually the base. But in this case, the instruction says, put B into the bullet and titrate it against A, which is the other way around. The real standard is meant to be put A into the bullet because the bullet is used to measure acid. So all I need to do if I'm to solve this question that is, in, that is, that is on the board, I need to keep to the instruction and solve this as follows. The instruction says A is a solution of 0 0.5, 0 0.05 mole per dm cube oxalic acid. This is the molecular formula of oxalic acid. 0 0.05 mole per dm cube of oxalic acid. 0 0.05 here represents the molarity, which was the old name, but the, the current name is concentration in mole per dm cube. Now, the B part says the B is a solution of KMNO4. The IU part name is potassium tetraoxomanganate 7 of unknown concentration. Put, put B into the bullet and perform the following exercise. Pipette 25 cm cube of A into a conical flux and add 10 cm cube of dilute H2SO4. If I'm to go by this, the instruction says put B into the bullet. This is my bullet. This is the retort stand. So I need to keep the instruction now. This is my funnel. We use the funnel to pour the reagent into the bullet. Before then, you need to check the bullet very well to ensure that there is no leakage. Then this is B. The instruction says put B. Put B into the bullet. So you need to pour this and then up to the mark. The bullet is calibrated down to 0 to 50. So all you need to do is you fill the bullet to the zero mark. All right. At this point, this is 50 cm cube of KMNO4, which is potassium tetraoxomanganate 7 solution. Then the instruction says also perform the following exercise. Pipette 25 cm cube of A. The A here is oxalic acid. Usually we pipette the base, but the instruction, the instruction says pipette A, which is the acid. This is the pipette calibrated to 25 cm cube. So I need to take 25 cm cube of the solution A, which is the oxalic acid. There is a mark at this point. So this point is 25 cm cube. So all I need to do is to ensure that the reagent goes down to that very mark. All right. Is on the 25 cm cube um, mark now. I'll transfer it to the conical flask and I'll release it there. At the end of this, you hit the conical flask with the bullet once, then everything goes out. Then Prepare 25 cm cube of A into a conical flux and add 10 cm cube of dilute H2SO4. This is my dilute H2SO4. This is an acid. It's an acid, so I need to acidify. Why are we adding this? It is to acidify the oxalic acid. Though it is an acid, but the instruction says add dilute H2SO4, 10 cm cube. This is a calibrated cylinder of 100 um, calibrated up to 100, 100 mil. All I need to do is to take 10 cm cube of the acid.
All right. This is 10 cm cube of H2SO4. Acidified, acidified the oxalic acid. And the instruction says, and heat. Heat the mixture and titrate with titrate while still hot with B. That is, I need to heat the mixture for at least 40 to 60 degree Celsius. So all I need to do now is to heat. All right, so from this point, you heat to a temperature of about 40 to 60 degrees Celsius. And you titrate as the reagent or the solution is still hot. You shake. So we are moving towards a point at which there will be a permanent color change. And that point is said to be the point of neutralization, the point at which an appropriate amount of the acid reacts with the base. The base here is the KMNO4. So this has to be this has to be done for three. You need to carry out three consecutive titrations to ensure three concordant values. What do I mean, mean by concordant values? The values need to be within a particular range. At that point, the value is said to be the, um, is said to be the title value of this reaction, the point at which the acid and the base are at equilibrium.
All right, from this point, there's a color change now. Initially, white titrating, it was colorless. But we can see that the color is, there's a fixed color now, which is an indication that the reaction has attained the point of neutralization. So what do I need to do? I need to read my value from the bullets. At what point? So going by this, the point here is, the bullet reading here is 18.50, 18.50. So all I need to do is to conduct this experiment for three consecutive times to obtain consistent or concordant values. When you do that, you need to tabulate your reading and solve accordingly. So how do I go about this? The, the table is as follows. Number one, titration. This is titration. You have your final bullet reading. In cm cube, then you have the first one, or your rough. Rough, you have the first one, the second, and then the 
third titration. It depends on the number of titration you want to do. You can as well conduct just the rough and two titrations, or the rough and three titrations. The rough is just to make the students stable, a kind of remove tension from the students. Now, the first titration, as an expert, my value is 18 point Five zero. My second titration is 18.30, and the third one is 18.10. OK? OK, this is the final bullet trading. My initial bullet trading in CMQ. I started from the zero mark from the bullet, which was um, 0, 0.00, 0, 0.00, all through, even from my rough. This is 18.70, my rough. So the volume of KMNO4 used That is, the KMNO4 is in the bullet. So the volume of KMNO4 used is the difference between the final bullet trading and the initial bullet trading, which is 18.70, 18.50, 18.30, and 18.10. When it comes to titration, all the values must be in two decimal places. That's the standard. Then. What else do I need to do? I'm to calculate the average title value. I've gotten the volume of KMNO4 used. So the average title value now becomes 18.70. Becomes I need to take two concordant values here, or three concordant values. But from what I've seen so far, I need to go for two values whose difference is either plus or minus 2. Plus or minus 0 0.2 difference. That's the standard. So the two values here are 18.5, which is the first titration, and 18.30, which is the second titration. So I'll go for 18.50 plus 18.30. 3, 0 divided by 2, which is the average title value of the KMNO4 used for the reaction.